Kwa jambo na karibu kwa taarifa tulizo kuandalia siku hii ya leo Jina langu ni Muhammad Mwandau na nisaidio kwa wa pili kwa lugha ya ishara si mwingine bali ni Felix Otieno na tukianza na taarifa yetu ya kwanza ambayo inafungamana na sherehe hiyo ya kuadhimisha siku ya wanawake ni kwamba taifa limeungana na mataifa mengine ulimwenguni kuadhimisha siku ya wanawake hapa Mombasa viongozi kina mama wameweza kutokeza katika eneo la mama ngina ili kusherekea sherehe hiyo na wakiwa na kauli mbiu ya kukabiliana na ubaguzi wa kila aina Kiongea katika hafla ya kuadhimisha siku ya wanawake duniani na ila Abdalla ambaye ni mwanaharakati wa kutetea haki za kila mama na watoto wa kike mashinani ametoa wito kwa wanawake wasiweze kutumika kila ni vikali visa vya dhulma dhidi ya wanawake nchini. Wanapenda sana kuelimisha watoto wa kike ambapo ndo next generation kwamba wasiweze kutumika. Watoto wetu ni lazima wapewe kipao mbele, lazima waweze kuchukuliwa kama watoto na idara mbalimbali ya kiserikali iwapo wataona kama mtoto wa kike ameweza kudhulumika. Tumekuwa na visa mingi ya, ya boda boda ama kama tunavyoona mwanamke jana aliweza kudhulumiwa. Ni dhahiri shairi kwamba wanawake bado tuko katika dhulma. Ni dhahiri shairi kwamba ni wanawake bado wanaendelea kunyanyaswa na wakiiwa wanaweza kunyanyashwa na wakati kama huu era ya sasa basi itakuwa bado haki ijatendeka Serikali imeombwa kutekeleza mikakati iliyowekwa kutetea haki za wanawake huko nchini na pia kuhusisha vijana katika uamuzi serikalini Kama kuna watu walio na katiba mzuri katika nchi yote ya Kiafrika basi ni Kenya Kenya tuko na act tuko na sexual act tuko na implement tuko na yani sheria mbada, sheria nzuri ambapo ikiweza kutekelezwa basi hakuna yeyote na tumeona rais ameweza kuwekeza mabilioni ya pesa ili mradi tu apunguze gender based violence sasa tunataka kuona kuanzia kiongozini mpaka mashinani hizi pesa zitatumika vipi na kazi na haki za kina mama zitaenda vipi Nampa, yani naomba kama serikali kama rais aweze kuja ama aweze kutuambia hizi mikakati ya mabilioni aliyoitenga ili kuweza kumtetea mwanamke ni yapi hayo kazi hizo ni vipi pesa hizi zinaenda vipi usishe sana vijana katika upande wa decision making maana kuna kwa kwamba kuna wizara ya youth lakini ukiangalia vijana ni wadogo ni kidogo sana katika hiyo wizara kwa hivyo unajiuliza wanashughulikia wana masala gani wakati vijana wenyewe hawahusishwi katika masala ya policy making wanaoishi kwa ulemavu wa kiongozo na Emily Juma wamehimizwa kujitokeza na kupiga kura na kadhalika kuchaguliwa kama viongozi nchini himizo that ningependa kutoa kwa PWS ni kuwa waweze ku break the bias kwa kujitokeza hii msimu wa kupiga kura waweza kupiga kura na wapi wajitokeze ili uh, tuchaguliwe kama viongozi kwa sababu sio ulemavu wetu ndio ina ndio inafanya mambo bali ni ile kitu yenye iko ndani yako so wadi kuna slogan moja nitasema kwa kizungu it is not my disability that counts lakini my ability mimi kama mwanamke uh, ambaye anaishi na ulemavu naweza kutoka kama Emily nichaguliwe na ni wewe kuongoza hata kushinda wanawake ambao hawana ulemavu wote. Huko dunia kisherekea siku ya wanawake, wito umetolewa kwa wanawake kututumika katika kuchochea vita kwenye mikutano ya kisiasa. Nikiripotia runinga ya boss kutoka kaunti ya Mombasa, jina langu ni Hassan Chomimu. <tos> Na mshukran sana Hassan Tomim kwa taarifa hiyo ya wanawake na tukizidi kusonga mbele ni kwamba wanawake wamehimizwa kujiunga na taasisi za kiufundi ili kupata ajira sawia na wanaume katika hafla ya kuwakumbuka wanawake bomba na walibobea katika nyanza tofauti imeandaliwa katika chuo cha kiufundi cha Mombasa Sharon Nyakundi aliweza kuzuru chuo hicho na kukuandalia taarifa ifuatayo ke hao waliungana kwa minadi ya kusherekea siku ya wanawake na pia walitaka kujua jinsi watakavyoongeza wakilishi wa kike katika vyuo vya kiufundi is the future um, a lot of good things are happening the opportunities abound and what we heard today from those tibet practitioners is very inspirational and motivating that we are already there that we have brave women that are participating 
effectively in the Tibet sector. And we wanted to give them the encouragement that um, yes, they are in the right field. Our main theme is to break the bias uh, for our girl child uh, so that uh, the coastal girls can be able to break those ceilings and take up all the technical causes that they wish to do. I would say is that uh, we currently have an MOU with the Technical University of Mombasa. So part of the things we are having is also to say that uh, within the business we signed up a UN charter where we also encourage uh, the participation and engagement uh, in women leadership, uh, diversity, equity and inclusion, disability. So within this, uh, that's where today we've considered it as an important occasion. And cost. The girl child is deprived. They may they want to take you to get married at 12 years old. You're not yet a woman. You don't even, you're a child. You don't even know yourself. Like the kids who are getting pregnant in Kilifi, we look at that and say, yes, that has happened. But that's not the end of this girl child. She has to go back to school. Mamba ni mwakilisho na waki wano ishi na ulemavu katika tawi la Mombasa. Ametaka wana waki wano ishi na ulemavu kujitokeza na kutia bidi kwa kazi wanazozifanya. Na pia amewataka wanadada ama watoto wano ishi na ulemavu kupewa fursa sawia na wengine. Celebrating not to leave behind girls and children with disabilities because most of the time they have been left behind and they are also women they are also girls in the community so we need to encourage them we need to bring them on, on, on board give them a platform on decision making give them a platform where they can they can realize their dreams Na sasa tuangazie tarifa ambayo umeweza kuzua hisi mbali mbali miongoni mwa Kenya ni kwamba Rais Uhuru Kinyata ameagiza msako dhidi ya wahudumu wa boda boda ambao wanatekeleza tabia za kihuni hii ni kufuatia kanda ya video inayosambaa kwenye mitandao ya kijamii ikionyesha wahudumu wa boda boda wakimhadaa mwanamke mmoja katika barabara ya Wangari Mathai jijini Nairobi baada ya kuhusika katika ajali to see, and it is only one of others that have occurred across this country, we must be honest. And yesterday, I did give instructions and I have ordered a crackdown on all border border. <laughs> operators starting here in Nairobi and moving across the country. And the reason I have just chosen just to pause, just to refer to this, is because I know with this, and because we're in the silly season of politics, there are some out there who will go out and start saying the government is harassing small traders, small business people. There is nothing further from the truth. We want to see our young people succeed in their businesses. There is no government that has done more to support our young people in trying to foster their businesses. There is no government that has done what we have done to help these border borders in terms of reducing the price of these motorbikes. And we have seen the number and how they have flourished across the country. That was not done because we wanted to kill their business. We wanted to promote their business. We wanted to ensure that they are able to earn a decent daily wage, which is still our commitment. Na bila shaka msako huo utaweza kuzaa matunda na haki kupatikana kwa mwanamke huyo. Na sasa tuelekee mahakamani huko Shanzu ni kwamba mahakama ya Shanzu imeshtumiwa kwa kuchelewesha kesi ama hukumu ya kesi na mkabili mwenyekiti wa kundi la Mombasa Republican Council Zero Mwaboza Masambu. Hii ni baada ya hukumu hiyo iliyoratibiwa kufanyika hii leo kurushwa hadi tarehe kumi mwezi huu. Hii ikiwa ni ya tatu. Kwa upande wake Mwaboza amedai kuangaishwa na hatua ya mahakama hiyo. Mwanabari wetu Ridwan Juma aliweza kuhudhuria kesi hiyo na kukuandalia taarifa ifuatayo. Wazee hawa kutoka maeneo ya Chonyi na Rabai kaunti ya Kilifi walifika katika mahakama hii ya Shanzu kaunti ya Mombasa asubuhi na mapema ili kupokea hukumu iliyorushwa kutoka tarehe 3 hadi tarehe 8. 
ikiwa ni mara ya nne hii leo hukumu hiyo imeweza kurukishwa tena kutokana na mahakama kutokuwa tayari hearing ya kwanza katika kesi hii ilianza tarehe sita mwezi wa tisa el, el, mwaka elfu mbili shirini na moja nikapewa deti nyingine uh, ya hearing tena ambayo ilikuwa tarehe kumi mwezi wa moja mwaka elfu mbili shirini na mbili judgment nikapewa siku ya tarehe tatu mwezi wa tatu mwaka elfu mbili shirini na mbili judgment ya kwanza hiyo ya pili nikapewa tarehe nane mwezi wa tatu mwaka wa elfu mbili ishirini na mbili leo hii ambao nimepewa judgment ya mara ya ine mtawalia ni kwamba nimepewa tarehe kumi mwezi wa tatu mwaka elfu mbili ishirini na mbili kiasi cha siku mbili tu peke yake hata tikiti ya kutafuta tikiti hapa kuna kuwa kugumu ndo kulalamika kwangu Zero anadai kusafiri umbali mrefu na hadi kufika katika mahakama hii hivyo basi anaomba idara ya mahakama kupitia jaji Florence Masharia kufanyia haki yake kwa kumhukumu Kesi hii imeendelea kwa muda mrefu kufikia hivi sasa kwa sababu uh, nimepewa judgment nyingi ambazo hazijaweza kufaulu uh, kufanyiwa kesi hii uamuzi Naomba tu mahakama kwamba wakati ninapokuja kotini ijipange na makaratasi yao ijipange kiofisi ili siku ikifika ya judgment hiyo kesi hiyo inafanywa uamuzi na ili na mimi niweze kupumzika kwa sababu ya tikiti ambazo zinanigarimu kila nikija imefika sasa safari ya ine ambayo kila nikija siku ya judgment ninapewa siku kidogo ambazo hata kutafuta tikiti kuna kuwa kugumu napewa siku mbili ama tatu hivyo basi kulingana na uchumi vile huko mimi nashindwa ni mtego ama ni kitu gani ambacho kinaendelea ndani ya koti kwa hivyo mimi tunaiomba mahakama kwamba wakati unapofika kujipanga ijipange makaratasi yao waweke sawa ili siku ile ya tarehe kumi judgment iweze kufanyika kikamilifu Aidha Zero Mboza ambaye amehudumu kama mwenyekiti wa kundi la Mombasa Republican Council anashutumiwa kwa kuandaa mikutano ya masa bila kibali Nikiripoti ya Runinga ya Boss kutoka kaunti ya Mombasa mimi ni